Welcome to Virtual Worship at First Presbyterian Church, 1793. We're glad that you're joining us today. The schedule's a little different this year in that typically this would be rally day, a time for us to relaunch the regular church program for the fall with Sunday school and choirs and everybody back in worship, and uh, that's not the case. But we know that God is with us no matter where we are and no matter who we are with, and today we get to be with you. So let's be together with God and each other, and thank you for joining us as together we worship God. Listen for God's word for you from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him of his debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell back and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and then went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured, until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The witness to God's word. Thanks be to God. Oh, for the wings, 
for the wings of a dove. Far away, far away, far away, far away, would I rove in the wilderness build me a nurse and remain. do I need to forgive somebody who's hurt me, who's injured me, who's offended me, especially if this gets to be a pattern? Like how many times would I need to forgive them? This is a question that the apostle Peter had, one of Jesus' disciples. So he said to Jesus, so how many times do I need to forgive somebody? Peter said, seven times? Seven seems like a good number. I mean, that seems generous to me. If you give people seven chances, I mean, you can count on your fingers. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. You got to use two hands to get up to seven. That seems like a, a good number. Jesus, though, ups the ante. His answer to Peter is um, not seven times. How about 77 times? 77 times? How about if you're driving along the roadway and you get pulled over for speeding and, um, and let's say you're keeping track. If you were to say to the officer, hey, this is only the seventh time, I don't think you'd have much forgiveness there. Or uh, if you said, well, but the Bible says uh, this is 77 times you get to be forgiven. That's really a lot. And 77 times of somebody offending you hurting you, injuring you, that just seems too much. And yet, this is what Jesus offers. And then Jesus, the great storyteller, offers a story to illustrate the magnitude of forgiveness and uses hyperbole again, overstating the case. Jesus said, you know, there's this monarch. Think of it as this king who uh, needs you to collect for him. And so there's this head honcho who has a lot of collectors underneath him who owes the monarch a lot. I mean, a lot. In fact, he owes, he owes this servant owes 10,000 talents. Now to put that in perspective, one talent is worth 600 denarii. Now, a denarius is what you would earn if you worked a whole day. In those days, if you worked a whole day, you get one denarius. So 6,000 denarii is a lot. And that 10,000 talents means like this is, this is like 60 million denarii. This is like more than anybody could ever possibly 
pay back. And in those days, if you sold yourself into slavery, you'd be selling your family and yourself for generations to come, and you'd still never pay this off. But nevertheless, this, this one who owes the big debt asks the regent, the monarch, the king, could I be forgiven of this? And is forgiven, is forgiven of this big sum. And then goes to somebody else after having been forgiven. And by the way, this is truly a pyramid scheme, scheme because everything that was owed to the monarch at the top that was to be collected by this big, important person, all of that is forgiven all the way down the line in the pyramid. The, the poorest of the poor at the bottom, they would get forgiveness too. But this same person who's received massive forgiveness then goes to somebody who owes him like a hundred denarii and uh, says, no, I'm not going to forgive you. No, you're not going to forgive. You've been forgiven all of this and you're not going to forgive. That seems wrong. And before it's over with, the man who was forgiven so much and then doesn't forgive is uh, sent off to be tortured. I mean, there's huge punishment for having received forgiveness and not being willing to offer even a little bit of this. Forgiving is something that's easier said than done. We talk about forgive and forget, but the truth is when we've been hurt, especially if we've been hurt deeply, it's pretty difficult not only to forget, but to forgive. I mean, there are people that just seem to have become the bane of our existence. Sometimes we cut off communications with them. It's a matter of seeing how we've hurt each other. And we ourselves often uh, keep track, keep count. You know, I've placed however many phone calls to that person asking for a return call, never called back. Do you know how many emails or text messages I've tried and the person will not even give me the time of day. I guess I'm just not important enough. Or did you see the way that that person treated somebody else with complete compassion, respect, dignity? But when it comes to me, I get nothing. I get nothing back. It's not fair. But do we forgive? Do we forget? You know, it's kind of like that old saying, uh, <laughs> Fool me once, shame on two, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Now that's just two times. Or as um, Michael Scott in the television show The Office did it, um, fool me once, <laughs> fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, strike three. I mean, there's no room there for forgiveness. And yet we're talk talking about 70 times seven, hyperbole, overstating the case to get our attention. If you wanna really see what's up, what God is up to in this passage, jump to the end of the passage where it says that we are to forgive, and let's not forget 77 times, forgive and forgive from the heart. My hunch is if you really started to keep track of the 77, Along the way, you just kind of lose count. And after a while, you'd get into the habit of forgiving so much that it would become a way of, of being, a way of life for you. And aren't generous, forgiving, merciful people the kind of people that inspire us? Isn't God, through Jesus Christ, the one who's given us more than we can ever imagine? This undeserved gift of grace where God loves us so much that there's, there's nothing we could do to earn God's love and there's nothing that we could do so badly that God's love would stop for us. God loves us. On the days when we love ourselves the least, on the days when we are most upset with that person that we see in the mirror, God loves us through and through. And that softening, of our hearts that happens through God's perpetual and unconditional and boundless love, that softening of our hearts is the thing that makes us more caring, effective human beings 
to share God's love with the world. It's been said that the task of becoming a Christian is to move from being thin-skinned and hard-hearted to becoming thick-skinned and tender-hearted. You see, it seems like people who are, eh, people who are thin-skinned are so sensitive and they're hurt so easily. And this is a matter of thickening our skin while at the same time softening our hearts. This softening of the heart allows us to get at what God is talking about through the writer of the gospel in saying that we are to forgive from our hearts, to forgive from our hearts, because that's when it really matters. And you know, this forgiveness thing isn't just for the other person or the other people who've hurt us. Forgiving them certainly lets them off the hook, allows them to feel better, might even transform them because of the love that they get, of the forgiveness that they get, might transform them into better people than they might ever have become. And this is something that's good for us because when we carry around the scorecard of how much and how often people have hurt us, that's something we're carrying on our backs that weighs us down. It's a burden that we carry around, that we keep track of, that gets in the way of our effectively loving others and caring for them and seeing what their needs are and meeting them where they are to discover what they need and how it is that we might provide that for them so that our mission becomes not so much keeping track of how other people hurt us, but more a matter of disregarding that and moving ahead to use our time and energy and talent and effectiveness to love other people. Forgiveness frees us and allows us to move more confidently into the world. I'm not saying it's easy. The truth is the more that we've been hurt and more the more deeply we've been wounded, the more difficult it is to let go and to move on. But we don't do this alone. We do this with the love of God and with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes before we get, we react, it's, we react in kind by striking back at somebody who's hurt us, simply stopping and taking a deep breath and allowing ourselves to know that God loves us is a better way to treat those who've treated us poorly. Jesus did that very effectively, and we are called to do so too. So, stop counting. <laughs> stop counting the wrongs and start loving as best you can and love others from your heart. Forgive from your heart. You the others, and the world will be better for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
God loves us and supports us and provides us guidance. And one of the ways that we best communicate with God is through prayer as we both talk with God and listen for the voice of God's guidance through the Holy Spirit. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for being with us in silence and when we're talking aloud, no matter what the time of the day or night. We're grateful to you for your faithfulness to us and we pray that you will help us to become even more faithful to you. We thank you for your guidance and presence in a world that has unpredictability about it now with a pandemic, with political rivalries, with passion about equality, with energy expended toward helping people who are sometimes in desperate straits because of all of these changes. We're grateful to you for being with school children who are going through different kinds of schedules these days and for being with parents and teachers and professors and all the like. Watch over and care for everyone and anyone who needs you this day. We come to you next, dear God, in a time of quiet reflection, praying on behalf of others. Our prayers of intercession are prayers that are heartfelt and today we know that our heartfelt words are offered up to someone who loves us dearly and we thank you for your love for us. We bring to you now, loving God, the names of people and places about which we care, praying for them and knowing that you will hear our prayers. So we ask you to be with us now as we pray for other people and other places. Hear us as silently now we pray for others. Thank you for hearing our prayers for others. We know that you care deeply about each one of us and that you love us passionately as if we were the only person in the world and that you love everyone in the world just like that. And so we come with you, to you confidently knowing that you hear us and care about us, bringing to you our hopes and dreams as well as fears and frustrations. Hear us, gracious God, as silently now we pray for ourselves. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Be with us now as we join in the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, using the sins and those who sin against us version of the prayer this morning. Shall we pray together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For it is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll ask your forgiveness before this service is over because I'm going to repeat myself. You'll need to forgive me for repeating myself by encouraging you to forgive each other and forgive others from your heart. So forgive others from your heart. And as you do that, know that God's peace is always with you. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.